Welcome to the NPT podcast for physical therapists preparing to sit for the National Physical Therapy Exam. From case studies to content review, we have you covered. Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPT podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need to know in order to absolutely crush the NPTE. So today, as we go through the content, we'll be doing a practice question related to the gastrointestinal system. As you know, as we go through this podcast, we're going through each of the FSBPT content outline body systems, trying to help you become not only accustomed to the content that'll be on the test, but also the style and type of questions that you're likely to experience on test day. Now, a lot of you who are listening to this have joined some of our courses. We do have a couple of free offerings over at ptfinalexam.com. I hope you check that out, uh, talking about study strategies and ways to uh, just to jumpstart your studies. Uh, but each quarter, we do run a full complement of courses, including our VIP course. That's the one that I run personally. It's where we go through the content sequentially through each of the systems. We go through a bunch of practice questions together. It's a great way to stay organized, systematized, and make sure that you've hit every single topic so that you can absolutely dominate on test day. Now, in addition to that, so the VIP class comes with complimentary access to our crash courses. The crash course is obviously just a quick crash course through the content right before test day. It's three weeks worth of content. I think you'll really enjoy that. It is it is meant to be glorified cramming, but it's a good way to go through it in a way that again is organized, hitting the big three systems, cardio, muscular, and neuro. But if you are interested in something that'll take you through the entirety of the content outline in a way that's not only engaging, but is also extremely effective, be sure to check out the VIP class. I don't think you'll regret it. All right, so today we'll talk through the gastrointestinal system. Uh, this is related to, uh, on the NPT, the FSBPT's content outline, there's somewhere between three and seven questions related to the gastrointestinal system. It does cover all three categories, examination, differential diagnosis, and intervention. However, the if you look at the content outline, you'll get a smile out of this. You'll look at it and you'll say that gastrointestinal examination could have somewhere between zero and two questions on it. And so that's clearly not that many questions when you consider it could be zero. I mean, that's a little bit, uh, maybe you've heard me talk about it. I'm sure I've mentioned this before, but it always cracks me up when you're listening to like a drug commercial or something that says serious, sometimes fatal episodes occur. It's like, wait a second, did you say fatal episodes? I don't want a fatal episode. So on the NPT, hopefully you don't experience any fatal episodes related to the NPT, but on the exam, you can expect somewhere between zero and two questions related to the gastrointestinal system examination. Today we'll be talking gastrointestinal differential diagnosis. Again, somewhere between two and three questions related to this for a grand total of three to seven questions on the gastrointestinal system. So without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. We'll talk through a practice question. I'll read it to you and the answer is have you select your answer and then we'll talk about it. A patient presents to the clinic complaining of epigastric pain radiating to the back, nausea, and anorexia. The patient's abdomen displays a bluish discoloration and the patient reports significant abdominal distension and clay-colored stools. Which of the following disorders is most likely present? So you can see there's a bunch of, of signs and symptoms listed here. A patient presents to the clinic complaining of epigastric pain radiating into the back, nausea, and anorexia. The patient's abdomen displays a bluish discoloration and the patient reports significant abdominal distension and clay-colored stools. Which of the following disorders is most likely present? Number one, acute pancreatitis. Two, cholecystitis. Three, Crohn's disease. Or four, ulcerative colitis. Again, that's acute pancreatitis, cholecystitis, Crohn's disease, or ulcerative colitis. There's a lot of itises there. So as you know, the correct answer here is number one, the acute pancreatitis. And you're going to ask, okay, what is it that sets that apart from the other options? So acute pancreatitis is the only one of these options that has the distinct bluish discoloration to the abdomen. This is from significant, usually severe hemorrhaging, pancre let's see if I can say this, pancreatic hemorrhaging. This is because as you, as the pancreas slowly digests itself, you get hemorrhaging into the abdominal cavity, leading to the bluish discoloration that does permeate the pretty much the entire abdomen as well as the flanks. It's 
it's one of the hallmark characteristics of pancreatitis. So clearly this is something not being treated by PTs. Rather, this would something to be of note, make what I would call expeditious referrals saying, hey, it looks like you've got some something serious going on. I suspect the pancreas. Let's go ahead and get you over to your primary care physician. So the other options, the option that is the second best, or I guess the first loser on the options is cholecystitis. No, so cholecystitis, as you know, that is when you have gallstones. So blockage of the biliary duct as bile leaves the gallbladder down into the digestive system. If there's any sort of blockage, then that's when you can get clay colored stools as well as abdominal pain, especially in the right upper quadrant related to the gallbladder. However, you would not likely see the bluish discoloration. So the bluish discoloration, that's what sets the acute pancreatitis apart from the others. The clay colored stools could go either way, pancreatitis or cholecystitis, just because pancreatitis can eventually lead to cholecystitis, but it, it's a cause that then blocks up the biliary duct, then leads to, to clay colored stools. So the point is that bluish discoloration, that's related to the pancreas. Clay colored stools, so meaning that it, they're lighter rather than a dark color, they're a very light color, the stool. And so that, that leads to you to suspect that the bile is not reaching the intestines on, on its way to digest all the food. And then finally, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. These are actually both in the same family of diseases of inflammatory bowel disease. So these guys, ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, they are, they're really just characterized by diarrhea, constipation, abdominal pain, uh, decreased ap appetite, nausea, weight loss, skin lesions. And they can also lead to oligo or polyarthritis just because it's an autoimmune disease as you consider the actual cause of ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. But the biggest one, I, I think for, for the inflammatory bowel disease would be the diarrhea and constipation. And you'll say to yourself, how can you have both? Can you be have diarrhea and constipation? The answer is yes. Uh, it, what happens is that the, the stool, as it, anyway, the stool tends to congeal, but it, it doesn't pass as it should. And so eventually what happens is you start to get the diarrhea forming around the outside of the constipation block. So like people who have experienced bariatric surgery will often have difficulty with the terrible duo of constipation plus diarrhea. You know, just a little, little tidbit there, I suppose. <laughs> terrible to talk about tidbits and uh, diarrhea and constipation. But in any case, acute pancreatitis has that classic bluish discoloration and can lead to clay colored stools as well as the epigastric pain radiating into the back as well as nausea and anorexia. Excellent. So with that, we'll bring today to a conclusion. Thanks so much for joining. Again, I appreciate you as you go through and are going through really, we'll call it just a, a very arduous and difficult study journey. I, I'm glad that you're you have me along for the ride. I'm happy to be here. And I just want to say thanks. Thanks for all that you do. Uh, if you do get a chance, please go over and leave us a five-star review over on Google Play or iTunes or wherever you listen to Spotify. <laughs> listen to Spotify. Listen to podcasts on Spotify or wherever it is you listen to it. Leave us a five-star review. It helps so much as we try to get the word out and to help students prepare for and pass the NPTE. So with that, until next time, we'll crane fist pumps all around. Catch you in the next episode. Thanks. This podcast was sponsored by PT Final Exam, an awesome resource for MPTE preparation. From live courses to university cohorts, PT Final Exam has a package to suit everyone's needs. Head over to ptfinalexam.com to see the wide variety of MPTE preparation options.